Hi everyone, um, so this video is going to be um, kind of a bit of a deep one um, and very kind of aimed at science but then it's very important I think as a fish keeper to understand the basic taxonomy of the fishes you're keeping especially if you really want to go quite far and then because if you understand that then you can apply knowledge to more difficult to keep and various species of that tax there were there not might not be that much information on so i'm talking about plecos and i'm defining them kind of as lorcardae so, so lorcardae is as i said a family so a family is which makes it a lot more easier as it's known as well it's kind of a monophyletic so the category plecos i'm saying is all species within their family um Lorcardae, which doesn't include any other family or taxa, as we call it. Taxa meaning like group. Lorcardae are a family within the order Siluriform, Siluriform being the catfishes, so they are definitely catfishes. Um, and Lorcardae are defined generally by having a depressed body covered in bony plates. They're not scales, catfish do not have scales. These are dermal plates, also known as. So it, their mouth can be modified to a suction, well, is modified to a sort of suction cup. And this you see across the whole taxa to different extents and levels depending on their ecology. So you could say their niche, because not all are going to be rasping on surfaces. Some are sort of um, substrate, substrate dwelling, particularly laurel carne, which I'll talk about later. So Lorcardae contains currently 1,001 valid species, currently described species, and this is according to Catalogue of Fishes, which is a scientific database of all the described valid species. And this is an extremely important because there are synonymizations. So one species might be synonymized, become included in another, if you get what I mean. So it's often good to know what you're all talking about because scientific names are universal. So they're the same no matter where you are in the world. And in the last 10 years, 222 species have been described, which is a lot. And from memory, there are about 350 currently described species of primates. So this family outbeats like primates which is a bigger category from memory and it's a lot so there's a whole wide of diversity their sizes range from anywhere between 1.8 millimeters standard length so that excludes a tail all the way to um, a meter long in according to hobbyist records or half a meter in scientific records standard length so including the tail you're looking at a meter and a half easily or even two meters because um, Acanthicus adenis has quite long tail ex um, extensions and that is why we don't really use standard uh, total length because those tail extensions on some Lorcardo can be quite impressive. Take a look at Panaculus albivermis, your flashplex and quite a few Panaculus are quite impressive there. So I'm just going to go over what an order is. An order is a group of animals and this contains a group of different families. So this is the bigger category and the smaller you get your family. So this is Lorcardae and this contains an even smaller group. And then the smaller group is a subfamily and so on that you get the genera. So these are um, the sort of a group of species and there's one that you get species. So these are getting smaller, more and more precise, different taxonomic or scientific units. So I'm going to go over, well, I've gone over Lorcardae, but Lorcardae has six subfamilies. So these are six units, scientific units of different fishes. And these are important because there's quite a lot of difference between them. And some you don't see, but I'll mention them anyway, because I can't really miss them out. So you have, of course, the biggest is hypostome. Uh, and this is your traditional plecos in the genera, sort of the genera um, hypancitrus, hypostomus, um, um 
Panak, Ancestrus, Chetstoma. Uh, basically, is the largest subfamily of Lorcardae, and it contains 484 currently classified species. And over the last 10 years, 97 species have been described. So that's a lot. And it's very big and it's diverse. The sizes range a lot. And there are a lot of smaller members in this clade. And many you don't see in the trade. So don't expect to see them all. Um, a lot of these won't be imported because people don't want them. Then They've not got the demand for the trade. And the price ranges do vary a lot. So these are the ones which can reach insane prices or very minimal. So you can expect to pay 50p all the way to... £2,000 or more depending on your country so they can be extremely pricey or extremely cheap and that's because of the diversity and hypostomate is described um, or oh, defined into different tribes but these tribes depend on what you're reading what scientific papers so I won't go over them but for maybe there is astri um, ancestrini um, to Plicthini, Hypostamini are the ones I see quite often, but it really varies. And I'll put a few papers below that are really interesting if you want to learn about Lorcard as a whole. So the next subfamily I'm going to go over are, well, I'm going to go over three that are, you don't really see in the trade and they're very small. So this is, the first one is Delta Urinae, and this contains seven valid members, and none have been described over the last 10 years. These are ones you might see a few in the trade, but they're not particularly common. Rhine Lepinae is commonly, well, the one, I mean, the one that you commonly see would be Pseudorhinelepsis genibarbis, or the um, L95, I believe, is the other one. Um, and these are very similar to hypostomae. They're quite deep. They have a modified swim bladder and there's six valid members. And they're more undescribed as there are with all of Laurel Cardae. So many yet to describe. Um, next is Lithogenine. Um, I've never seen them. There's three currently described members, more to be described. But none of these three have had any described in the last 10 years. So... It might just be lack of funding or they're not particularly common. It could be a whole load of different reasons. So the next two are other ones you do see. And this is why I argue that Plex should cover the whole category. Because always you're picking and choosing different members because then you're saying um, autosynclus aren't, but pseudorhine lepsis is. And you can't really shouldn't really do that because otherwise it depends on who you're talking to so next one is laurel carne this contains 252 currently classified species of 31 described over the last 10 years this is your very elongated sort of skinny usually um laurel carne um and the the typical ones you will know are your stereosoma your phaloella um pseudo hemiodon um planilocoria so they do have a lot of diversity in sizes, and this is one of the larger um, taxa, the second largest subfamily. And they can range from ones that you will see on the glass, if you get what I mean, so you follow the way of stereosoma, the ones that are rasping on, a, on an object, to the ones that are substrate together. So this is your pseudohemiodon, your... Um, uh, the planet Lacoria. And these have quite ornate mouths, because these... The ones that are in the substrate, they do actually, quite a few use those mouths for their brooding and the males will carry the eggs on their beautifully ornate mouths. So they are a really interesting group, but they're ones that I don't really dwell into too much and they're not always as common. Um, the diversity isn't always easy to find um, and some can be a bit of a challenge, but it's the same for a lot of Laurel Cardi. So the next one is your, you probably have seen these, but you haven't seen many of them. So this is hypo, hypopotomine, and this is the one that is <laughs> quite a mouthful. So these have, t this subfamily has 247 currently classified species within, and 992 have been described within the last 10 years. So they're quite big. Um, 
apart from in size this is your smaller subfamily in general they the largest I would say are probably around nine, around nine to ten um, centimeter standard length and the smallest they are some of the smallest so they have real um, miniaturization and they are quite popular so autosynclis is a member hypopotomine is a member histonotus um and they're the ones that pop off the top of my head um but there's quite a few and they have quite a cult following in a way because they are quite interesting Ooh. so these i would argue are plecos because i was just saying everything else is but no no these aren't and they used to be called autosynclus used to be known under the common name the dwarf pleco and then people just called them autos which is just half of the gen genus name or genus name which i'm not keen on i'd rather just call them autosynclus and there are a lot of undescribed species as well. Um, I've got a video of Hypopotomine, um, SP Peru or Robocop. I believe they're the same um, species, but they're undescribed. And they are striking and they are beautiful. So, what, so a lot of people might be wondering, how long have we been doing this? Uh, actually, probably not many people are wondering. But, um, so Hypostomus plecostomus is what is traditionally known as the pleco or the original pleco, most likely. There was a genus once known as plecostomus and that contained varying, me varying members of Tereoplichthys. So this is your Tereoplichthys gibiceps, um, Tereoplichthys disjunctivus. That is that genus that are commonly known as common plecos now. Hyposta that I mean sorry. Um Plecocostomus is no longer a genus. It will contain just different members of Hypostomus as well. Hypostomus Plecostomus is no longer seen in the trade. And this has probably caused a lot of confusion because for some reason people don't want to identify well research their fishes. Hypostomus has set seven soft dorsal rays, so that is the top fin. You have the main spine, which is the first one, the strong looking one, and then there will be seven after that. Tereoplichthys, the common plecos, they have um, eight or more. So they have generally they have a lot more. They're quite a lot. I would say Hypostomus is is a very really very genus, very massive. Not many described. Pain to identify. Um, but they're quite usually stockier fish, whereas um, Tereoplichthys tend to be more elongated in general. Um, but both are like bombs in the tank. If they're well, they're all lorcar. They are quite heavily plated, like uh, Calicthidae, their sister um, or uh, sister family. But Hypostomus plecostomus was described by Linnaeus in 1758, and this is when species were first being described with scientific names that were binomial so that means your genus which is the first one always capitalized so this would be hypencystus, tereoplichthys, panac, panaculus and then afterwards you have the species name and this is not capitalized and both of these words if possible ital italicized is that how you say it but yeah so these should be slanted um but it's impossible to do online and I can't do it on my video editing software, so I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is really what I was going to talk about. Um, I'm not really sure people want more scientific content or taxonomic content because it is it's very niche. Not many people study taxonomy. Um, there's very few courses for it it's kind of seen as dead there's no funding um but if people are interested in it, i could talk more um and yeah so i've got possible update videos my goldfish pond eventually when it actually looks nice because it doesn't right now and needs more marginals i'm thinking um and yeah discus updates finding wild discus is an absolute nightmare um especially at the moment there's no brazil import brazil exports so yeah so i'll see and i'm tempted to set up the other tank for discus and possibly rehome my satan percy lucas dicta i'm not really sure 
but I do really want I do like my Xeno Mistus Nigaro. They're getting well, they're getting bigger, not that big, but yeah, I see them out more. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um if you like my videos, comment, um, like, subscribe. It's up I don't mind, I'm not here really. I'm just here to talk really more than anything. Um because I do that a lot. Anyway, thank you.